The temperance movement originated in the United Kingdom and later spread to the United States. It emerged during a time when alcohol consumption was widely accepted by the upper classes, but condemned among the poor. The movement gained momentum in England due to the negative effects of gin on the lower class, while in the American colonies, rum was seen as the devil's drink. The temperance movement in America began even before the country gained its independence. In the early days, the temperance movement in the United States was primarily church-based, with small groups of men pledging to practice moderation when it came to alcohol. Locally brewed beer and wine were considered acceptable, but distilled spirits were the main focus of the temperance groups. As the movement spread outside of the churches, it became linked with other social issues such as abolitionism and women's suffrage. The American Temperance Society was formed in 1826 and quickly gained over one million members, driven by religious fervor and the belief that alcohol consumption was a national shame. Similarly, in the United Kingdom, the temperance movement was led by Presbyterian ministers and became intertwined with women's suffrage. This led to the development of temperance newspapers and a growing call for total abstinence from alcohol. The Mormon Word of Wisdom, written in the 1830s, called for total abstinence from alcohol, but its creator, Joseph Smith, continued to consume alcohol himself. In the 1840s, the Washington Temperance Society, formed by artisans and mechanics in Baltimore, took a non-religious approach to helping alcoholics. They focused on supporting individuals struggling with alcohol addiction and opposed the condemnation from religious groups. Despite their success and support from figures like Abraham Lincoln, they faced strong criticism and eventually splintered due to attacks from religious temperance societies and their involvement in other social issues. During the Third Great Awakening, the Band of Hope was formed in Leeds, England, with the aim of teaching children the moral failings of alcohol and promoting total abstinence. In the United States, the Third Great Awakening coincided with the battle for women's suffrage, abolition of slavery, and prohibition of alcohol. Gospel missions and the YMCA provided alternative destinations for young men, while the Women's Christian Temperance Union, WCTU, emerged as a strong advocate for the prohibition of alcohol and women's suffrage. In 1880, the Salvation Army made its way to the United States, joining the temperance movement and advocating for the elimination of alcohol from society. This led to clashes with pub owners and their loyal customers, who formed the Skeleton Army to disrupt Salvation Army parades and recruiting efforts. Meanwhile, in Oberlin, Ohio, the Anti-Saloon League emerged in 1893 with the goal of national prohibition. Aligning itself with church-based temperance movements and national organizations to combat the perceived corruption caused by the liquor industry. Harry Nation's tumultuous life began with a family history of mental illness, causing her to move frequently. After marrying and experiencing personal tragedy, she found herself in Kansas, where she joined the Women's Christian Temperance Union and began praying for guidance. In a divine vision, she was instructed to smash saloons with rocks, a mission she fearlessly pursued gaining national fame and becoming a prominent figure in the suffragette movement. Despite controversy and personal hardships, Carrie Nation left a lasting impact on the temperance movement before her death in 1911. By 1900, the temperance movement had spread its influence across all aspects of American society, even reaching overseas. Many states had implemented alcohol bans, with some states completely prohibiting it. The movement was closely tied to evangelical religious groups, and the Anti-Saloon League had achieved certain forms of prohibition, like banning Sunday alcohol sales. 
The Cincinnati Reds baseball club was even expelled from the National League for selling beer on Sundays, despite it being accepted by the city's German community. In the early 20th century, the British temperance movement took a more realistic approach to their goal of eliminating alcohol. They focused on limiting the number of places and hours that alcoholic beverages could be obtained. However, their efforts were met with resistance from the conservatives and the powerful brewing industry. The movement gained momentum during World War I when U.S. President Woodrow Wilson imposed limits on alcohol sales to nations at war. The United Kingdom passed the Defense of the Realm Act in 1914, which included measures such as nationalizing pubs and imposing taxes on beer and ale. Similar restrictions were also implemented in other parts of the British Empire, including New Zealand and Canada. Meanwhile, in the United States, Congress passed a resolution in 1917 calling for national prohibition, which was ratified and became law in 1919. The Volstead Act was then passed to enforce the new law, leading to a rush of alcohol purchases before prohibition began in 1920. After the 18th Amendment was passed, the temperance movement celebrated their victory in the United States. However, medical professionals questioned the wisdom of prohibition due to the therapeutic uses of alcohol in medicine. The movement began to lose influence as crime rates increased, and organized crime emerged in the illegal liquor industry. The temperance movement did not anticipate the changing roles of women in the 1920s, as they began joining men in nightclubs, bars, and saloons. The introduction of speakeasies and new cocktails, along with the rise of the flapper girl, led to a disregard for prohibition. Despite this, the federal and state governments continued to enforce the law, with anti-prohibition organizations lobbying for its repeal based on personal liberty, lost tax revenue, and the health benefits of drinking. Prohibition was finally repealed in 1933, with the 21st Amendment being ratified through a method never before used in the Constitution. Even after prohibition was repealed, the temperance movement persisted in its efforts to limit the availability of alcohol. The American Council on Addiction and Alcohol Problems, ACAAP, formerly known as the Anti-Saloon League, continued to advocate for abstinence and work towards reducing the supply and demand for alcoholic beverages. The Women's Christian Temperance Union also remained active, recruiting members to sign pledges against alcohol and tobacco, and lobbying the government to remove alcohol from military bases and Indian reservations. Despite the decline of the temperance movement, its history suggests that it will continue to make efforts in the future.